Let's, uh, since we're talking about remote ID, let's talk, and I see a comment here from Joseph Tafari, XJet will save us. It makes me think. I just saw this video from Bachrinder saying, you can say no to remote ID. And um, you can watch the video. It's easy to find. Uh, he does a little, you know, what is remote ID, who needs it, practical application, etc., enforcement, and goes on to what can Americans do. And, and what his advice is for what Americans can do is don't comply. Um, and, and I, that's interesting. It's interesting to me. Um, like, obviously noncompliance is always an option. Noncompliance is always an option. Anytime there's a, a, a rule or law, you have the choice as a sort of free adult to decide whether you're going to comply with that rule or not. When you drive on the highway, you can drive the speed limit. You can drive five over the speed limit. You can drive 10 over the speed limit. You can drive 20 over the speed limit. If you get caught, you're going to get a ticket, right? You can decide. You make that decision for yourself, though. Um, and the, the reality is that a lot of people are not going to comply for various reasons. Not everyone's going to say not comply from a principled stance. A lot of people are not going to apply, comply just out of laziness and ignorance. And that's, you know, they just are like, I don't care. Um, it, it is, uh, I'm not sure. And I say this in the comment below Bachrinder's video. So I don't want anybody to think that I'm like saying something here on stream behind his back. Uh, and the question that I have is what is non-compliance going to actually do? Where is the path from you as an individual saying, I won't comply to the FAA saying, oh, we need to change this. Because some people seem to think that noncompliance is the same as like civil disobedience or resistance. That noncompliance is the way to change this rule or prevent this rule. You see that also in XJet's videos, Bruce Simpson. Uh, and I don't want anybody to think that the fact that I uh, disagree with, with Bruce and in some ways disagree with Bach Reinder. I don't want anybody to spin that into like a YouTube beef, especially in this time when we all should be unified behind the belief that this is bullshit and we don't like it. So we're all on the same side of that line, right? But like uh, Bruce Simpson says things like, you know, if, if everybody hadn't registered their drones, then this wouldn't have happened. That non-compliance at, at an earlier stage would have prevented us from being where we are now. And, and I, I think that's, uh, I have a problem with that. Uh, because for one thing, very few people complied with the registration requirement. <laughs> How many people actually registered their drones? Some did. Some people were like, okay, five bucks, I'll register my drones. But if you look at the total number of drone pilots in the U.S., a, a, a very small minority of them actually registered. So there already was mass noncompliance, uh, mostly through ignorance, not necessarily through a principled resistance. It didn't prevent us from getting where we're going. And it really feels like almost victim blaming to say to all the people who have been screwed over and will be and are continuing to be screwed over to say, if 3% of you or 6% of you or whatever the percent was, hadn't registered your drones, then we wouldn't be here now. It's the fault of everyone who registered their drone two years ago. You guys sold us out. Well, and that's what I hear Bruce saying when he's, uh, that's what I, what I hear in a sense. And I think that's really, uh, number one, inaccurate and unfair. Uh, and I think it is important because if you want to do something to fight, you have to do something effective. And simple noncompliance is not fighting. It is, it is, uh, it's not going to change the rules. The FAA is not going to go, well, shoot, they didn't listen to us. I guess we give up. Okay, guys, you got us. We're changing the rules. Don't comply if you don't want to comply. More power to you. But it's not, it's not, it's not like 
in the civil rights uh, era when uh, people of a certain race were prevented from being in certain places. And they said, no, we are going to go to those places and you will have to use violence to remove us from those places. And the, the, the implicit violence that is normally out of sight, we are going to make that violence visible by forcing you to turn fire hoses and dogs and batons on us. And that will win the hearts of people over when they see that when the, when the, when the implicit violence is made explicit. How could that work with, uh, with, with remote ID? Look at the case like, like Philly Mikey, who got something like $180,000 in fines from the FAA. Um, I'm aware that he was never forced to pay those fines. But my point when bringing that up is that's a case where the ridiculousness of this, re this regulation was made uh, public very loudly public high profile ridiculous cases that win sentiment to our side that could be a thing that helps and non-compliance is how you get there um but if if uh, one hundred eighty thousand dollars in fines for Mil philly mikey didn't win the public over to us i don't know what will i don't know um yeah i don't know I guess I guess my question is, uh, you know, if XJet's going to save us, how, what's OK? I'll take any savior I can get. What's the what's the plan? In my comment with Bachrinder and, and kudos to him, he replied, you know, I respect his reply a lot. One of the things he said was maybe instead of spending seventy thousand dollars suing the FAA in court, we could have some kind of legal defense fund for pilots who are protesting so that they can not have to pay fines. And I'm like, yeah, in principle, I dig that. Say, OK, we're going to not comply. And the people who get fine, we're going to help them fight. and We're going to help them pay their fines and F this thing. Who's doing that? Who's in charge of that? Is that is that XJet? Is that Bachrinder? I love it. I like that idea a lot. Because when I watch XJet's videos, what I hear is, you guys let this happen to yourself. This is your fault. If you had only listened to me when I told you the sky was falling, the sky wouldn't have fallen. And now that the sky has fallen, the answer is to listen to me some more while I tell you that the sky is going to keep falling. But I don't have a roof for you. I don't have anything to actually keep the sky from falling on your head. I'm just going to keep shouting about how the sky is falling and you guys should have listened to me years ago. And and that's not helpful. That's like a dude who is shouting the, the, the ship is sinking and everybody else has buckets and is bailing water. And he's going, hey, guys, I told you the ship was going to sink. I told you we were going to hit the iceberg. You guys should have listened to me when I said the iceberg was coming. It's like, okay, bro, get a bucket, start bailing water. Anyway, oh, that's my remote ID rant for today. Anybody who's got a solution, more power to you. The solution is not... I, I think that uh, today it's clear that any gains made by organizations like F Flight Test Community Association, FPV Freedom Coalition, or even the AMA, any gains made by them, and there are some and have been some and will be more, will be incremental and marginal, and that the, the broader scope of remote ID is sort of that die is cast. And so we have to figure out how to live under that. Big Data Pimp says, XJet's right. He's not saying if you had only listened to me. He's saying you should have been listening to all of the people saying it. Tons of us have been saying remote ID needs to be challenged. 
Remote, but remote ID has been challenged. No, not only remote, only race day quads. Yes, race day quads lawsuit was the a, a, the only legal challenge, right? Everyone else who might have made a legal challenge cast in under that, and they were like, let's put all our effort behind this one point. So there was only one legal challenge. Given how expensive it was, it's not hard to see why. There have been many other steps. It's not like everyone just went, I don't care. There were tens of thousands of responses to the NPRM. And when people when when people say, if only you had done more, I'm like, do you not do you not give credit for the things that were done? A massive amount of work was done and has been done and is continuing to be done. And the fact that we keep losing isn't evidence that we're not fighting. And it's insulting. Uh, and upsetting to hear people say the fact that you guys are losing means you're not fighting hard enough, especially when those people aren't aren't here in America and aren't fighting and are just s s sitting somewhere in New Zealand telling about how it ought to be. Also, just to be clear, if 10 people sued the FAA in the same way RDQ was, they all would have lost. The reason RDQ lost the case is because no one has been prosecuted under remote ID rules. So, like, if you actually follow the case and pay attention to what happened, it doesn't matter how much force you had or how many lawyers you had or what you attempted to do. That case lost because no one has been in trouble yet. And they specifically said that at the end. You can theorize about all these things and you can theorize about loss of data and you can theorize about people being tracked, but we can't do anything about it. We do not find a constitutional issue here you need to come back when somebody has an issue so mm -hmm. I, like i understand the want for people to have done more and uh, all these things to be hitting them from 18 different angles but uh, you know um it's not like that would have achieved anything else except wasting more people's money that donated to these projects yeah do you uh as as a uh fpvfc member do you and you just say no i'm not interested no comment if you want do you want to respond to this comment by Big Data Pimp, who says RDQ are the only ones that made any real fight? Bless the FPVFC, but Bruce is right about what the FAA has been doing to the FPVFC, which presumably he means they've been sort of leading you guys around by the nose and then just doing whatever they want anyway. I mean, I think uh, I think Dave would be pretty open to say, I mean, he said before in many of our meetings, if you don't know, we have town hall meetings every other Wednesday on our Discord, on the FPVFC Discord, so you can come and talk to us um, about things. But um, yeah, I mean, Dave would tell you that, yeah, I mean, at some point, we hoped that we could get somewhere. I mean, w what else do you do, right? You either don't do anything, or you attempt to work through the channels to get somewhere mm -hmm. and improve the, the situation. Right. So... Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know that there's much more we could have done, but yeah, I mean, I think overall we were more positive than we are now. So. I don't think you guys had any illusions. Like, Blunty, you specifically have a lot of experience dealing with federal regulators and, and laws in, in the cannabis industry. So I don't think you had any illusions that the federal government was, like, going to approach this in good faith or not have an agenda. And you guys went in and said... We're going to try to see what we can get by fighting within the system and got what you got. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's my take on it. Um, we have uh, we have some pinned comments here. Uh, Roborito wants to know, if you're transmitting a compliant signal, why would anyone be inspecting the transmitter? I don't know. I mean, it, it, I don't know. Why would they inspect the transmitter? Uh, it would only be a question if you got sort of dinged and then they took your quad and for some reason wanted to investigate your quad to be sure you were compliant. And then having a transmitter that had a DOC would be necessary. Mike Bergman says, is this a matter of some people accepting there is no reasonable way of changing this and some people who think the opposite? Um, I see what you're getting at, Mike. I mean, I think that Bachrinder's video to me feels like a little bit of a, a, a sort of a resignation to the fact that this isn't going to go away. Um, but just because there is no reasonable, I, I think that there's no reasonable way of getting rid of remote ID writ large, right? 
And it doesn't seem like any major changes, like changing the 250 gram limit to one kilogram or something. It doesn't seem like those are likely. So I think you can have acceptance that that is the state while still trying to make small gains. Like, for example, the FPV FC is working on uh, protected operations and has gotten some traction on potentially uh, getting protect getting protected operations written into the regulation. And if that were to be true, that would be amazing. Um, the idea is that some people think that if you can't get everything you want and just wipe the slate clean, then pff, we're out of here. And other people think, well, I'm going to fight for an inch here and an inch there, even if we lose a mile. And I know we're going to lose the mile, but I'm going to be proud of the inches that, that I got. Big data also, pip. Just to, oh, yeah, sorry. go ahead. Go ahead. Just to be clear, shielded operations looks like we're probably going to lose that too. I don't. I. I mean, the the I world mean, sure. of this is that we're we're doing what we can, and the reason it's even in the rules in the first place is because we suggested it. But in the BVLOS rules, uh, it's like a rulemaking offering. I can't remember what they call it, but it's basically like, hey, we're thinking about doing this, and they ask a bunch of questions to people to submit back, which we did. Yeah. Um, one of the things they suggested was that shielded operations would still have detect and avoid on the drone. It's like that's entirely against the point of shielded operations. Like the whole point of shielded operations is we're down where the planes can't be. Why would we need to detect and avoid in the shielded operations spaces? Right. So they were like, you, okay, you don't need remote ID, but you do need detect and avoid, which is senseless. So, you know, again, hopefully we can fix this kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, I just want to be real about that. So. Yeah. No, you can be real about the fact that it's a hopeless battle. And, you know, what's that story that, I don't know, the freaking – the Spartans, right? The tiny unit of Spartans that went on the suicide mission to hold the pass against the Persians so the others could escape. And I feel like guys like X-Jet would be out there going, freaking losers. <laughs> I don't know. That's a little, okay, that's a little strong. But So, yeah, uh, I, one thing I'll say is a lot of people are asking, and I'd be curious to know what you think as well, Yeah, but like, what do you think the motivation for remote ID is in the first place? So, like, we know that Congress said, hey, you need to do remote ID in the FAA Reauthorization Act of, I believe, 2018. 2016 started it and 2018 cemented it. Um, and that's why they did remote ID. But, yeah. you know, a lot of people are saying, like, hey, this is Amazon. This is Google. This is Zipline. Some people are saying, hey, this is DOJ. This is safety people. This is people being scared of threats. Hey, yeah. this is inevitable no matter what this will happen. Hey, this is aviation. Like, you know, a lot of people are saying, like, what, where, where's, what's the source? You know? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think anybody knows for sure. Um, I think that uh, in the beginning – uh, ever, it was easy to blame the Amazons and the et cetera of the world for wanting to carve out something for drone delivery. Um, I think that that has never been as if you if you look at like the contributors to the, the DAC and stuff, there's the commercial drone alliances in there. But ultimately, commercial drones have not really been as successful and as people imagined they were going to be. Um, so I do think they're in there. But I I I think that uh, the people have underestimated the security concerns. And now that we've had uh, all this FPV, this footage of, of weaponized FPV drones coming out of Ukraine, I think that the public is more aware of these security concerns than they have been in the past. Uh, and it, it cracks me the fuck up when hobbyists say, stop talking about this, stop showing this footage because this will just make the lawmakers crack down on us harder. And I'm like, they have been seeing footage like this for five years before you even knew it was there um, or however long. DHS and whoever else have been showing them and saying, this is scary stuff. We need to do something about this. And ironically, remote ID doesn't really do anything to prevent any of that. So that's stupid. So they've come up with a solution, a non-solution to a – they've come up with a non-functional solution to a, an actual problem. But they don't seem to care that the solution the, – the government said, hey, we need a way to make drones safer and protect the airspace. And the FAO went, yes, sir, and came up with some bullshit and welcome to the federal government. You know, I ticked the box that said I did the thing I was supposed to do, even though the thing I did doesn't work. I get to keep my job. 
Uh, no one really knows like what percent of the motivation was commercial drones, general aviation, DHS, or any other. No, I don't think anyone could possibly know that. Yeah, my my, I'm gonna say my non FVVFC take, my personal take here. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, uh, is just that I think if you zoom out and think about what happened, it seems like uh, politics, 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 politics. We got that remote ID bill 2018. Like, again, like you said, people thought it was for safety or whatever. We needed to do this kind of stuff, even though it doesn't actually help. It makes it seem like everything's helpful. Remember, the original pitch was for network-based remote ID. Mm -hmm. So that would have been every drone ever is on the Internet. And if the drone is not on the Internet, it's bad, right? So in that world, I guess you can see some dystopian version of that where it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but... But then that rolls into the FAA. They don't make up the rules anymore. They make rules from that idea, mm -hmm. right? And so it's just a bunch of people who went wild trying to do that because that was their assigned positions. Right. And then you've got a bunch of people in there who like lawyering and doing BS and making crazy rules, and that happened a lot. And I think it kind of rolled into this whole thing. And then, uh, I mean, essentially, why would you dis why would you not include rec? Well, there's two reasons. One, you hate rec. Recreational. Or two, yeah, recreational. Or two, it's just a lot easier to ignore them. Mm -hmm. And like, it sure does seem like it's just a lot easier to ignore them because all the commercial people don't want them around because they're just annoying, right? So to me, it looks like the commercial influence was such a big deal because these commercial companies came into this hole that was like, hey, come to our work groups and put people here and spend money on people at the Hill, right? Mm -hmm. And then that basically rolled into, oh, now all the commercial interests are telling the FAA all the information, and right. they don't really care about recreational pilots, and it's just easier to continue to ignore them. And the couple right. voices like us who are saying, hey, please don't ignore us, they don't right. really seem to care, you know? It's like, it's like you know, you, you, you finished this complicated project, and right as you're about to deliver it, someone goes, wait a minute, there's these two things we overlooked, and you're like, can you just shut the fuck up? Yeah, We're if we just deliver keep pushing, this. nobody will know. It's fine. Just just right. push it. And that's why yeah. that's why we don't really get a seat at the table. That's what um, it feels like. Big Big yeah. Data Pimp says I'm sure there were tons of registrations. You are correct, Big Data Pimp. There were tons of registrations. But that's the numerator on a much, much larger denominator. So I don't remember, Blunty, do you remember the estimate for what percent of drones were registered? I know we we tried to come up with an estimate. I feel like it was like 30% or something, but I'm not right. I'm not sure what the number was. So you're saying you're saying that 70% non-compliance was not enough. Is that the argument that 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 XJet is making? He's like too many of you complied and now you got these rules and it's your own damn fault. Not a direct quote. It's like, well 70% of us didn't comply. That's a pretty big freaking number. Now, 30% did comply and maybe that was hundreds of thousands of registrations like well, i don't know what you want though if 70 so, percent non-compliant isn't 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 enough what like that how are you going to win if that's what so it's going to hinge on let me just devil's that let me attempt to devil's advocate this real quick so if you think about it and think about it like we, they're calling remote idea license plate obviously it's a broadcast license plate so it's more than that but mm -hmm. they're calling remote idea license plate let's pretend like maybe carrying your license on you right Mm -hmm. is registering your drone, mm -hmm. right? So in that respect, I think it is a bigger statement to drive without a license plate than it is to just drive without your license in your hand. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So I get the idea. I get the idea. Like if, you, if I mean, I everybody doesn't use a remote idea, it's much more visible. It's much more obvious. It's much more apparent. Much Many more people will get in trouble. Many more right. trees will get rattled. Right. than the people who just don't register and nobody cares about. Well, if, if non-compliance is part of a strategy to achieve an end, I'm down, right? right? Because if you look at, if you, I mean, if you take, like I'm not an expert on the civil rights movement, so I apologize, but, it's, but if you look at Rosa Parks, Rosa Parks wasn't a random woman who just decided one day to not sit in the back of the bus. That was all a part of a of carefully planned, strategized campaign to fight that rule. She was an intentional trial balloon, and they picked her, and they were ready to support her, and they were ready with legal support, and so on. And so if Bachrinder says, don't comply, and the first one of you guys that gets dinged, we've got a legal support case. We're going to, we've got media relations ready to go. And we're going to make you, we're going to find the perfect, beautiful, blue eyed, brown haired kid 
from the suburbs who's going to go on TV and say, I was just flying my drone and the nasty FAA tried to find me $5,000 from my paper route. And he's going to cry on Katie Couric's shoulder. Let's do it. That's a, a campaign for social justice. But if the message is F the FAA, middle finger, full stop, that's not that's fine for you as an individual, but that's not going to change things. Bruce has been fighting regulators longer than most of us. That's true. Uh, has he won? Has he changed any rules? Has uh, uh, Pretty sure. I mean, am I wrong? I, I'd love to be wrong. Has he got any W's there? Has he create? Has he pushed and made the rules in New Zealand different than they would have been before that, you know, uh, because I know he has been persecuted by he is no stranger to being persecuted by unrealistic, unreasonable rules. He has been the victim of this kind of persecution before. That doesn't make him an expert on how to prevent this kind of persecution from happening to others. It just means he. Yeah. All right. Um, well, let's let's not talk about remote ID for the whole stream, only for like half of the stream. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. Like he's a he's a wonderful troublemaker. I, I have full respect for his willingness to say, F the rule makers. I'm going to loudly do what I want to do. And I'm going to make an example of myself so people can see how unfair this is. I, re I have a, a massive amount of respect for him to, that he continues to do that. Uh, I just wish he would stop uh, blaming the victims for their own victimization as someone as someone who has been victimized by authority out of control. Does Bruce say you think he would know that the authorities are going to victimize you if they decide to do it and not blame the victims, which which is the most annoying thing he does. Say, if you guys had only listened to me and done what I said, even though a lot of people did listen to him and do what he said, but not enough, not enough of them. And now you're being victimized and it's your fault because you didn't listen to me. Okay, whose fault was it when you were victimized? Who didn't you listen to? Maybe, maybe the, you know, government's going to victimize. And we should focus not on who, like whose fault on it, but what we can do to make it better. Twisted Carbon says, Bachgrinder's not against remote ID. He says it's not necessary for freestyle and racing. Yeah, I saw that at the end of his video. I guess we're going to talk about one more thing. At the end of his video, he's like, you shouldn't need remote ID on freestyle and racing drones because that don't have a GPS. And I'm like, bro, are you saying that remote ID is an overreach when applied to freestyle and racing drones, but it's fine when applied to GPS drones? Are you throwing GPS pilots under the bus just like the AMA wants to throw all FPV pilots under the bus? Okay, that surprised me. And I think that's just a desperate, I think he's just upset and desperate and, and has in some ways forgotten his own principles because if remote ID is bullshit, which it is, then it's just as bullshit when a DJI drone has to do it as when a freestyle drone has to do it. That is a completely meaningless and arbitrary and self-serving distinction. Remote ID is bullshit on an FPV drone. It's bullshit on a DJI Mavic and it's bullshit on a fixed wing. It's just bullshit no matter where it is. So stick to your guns there, dude, is what I would say. Long range drones. Oh, it's okay on long range drones. I mean, remote ID on long range drones. I don't know. I. All right. No. He said something like not to throw GPS pilots under the bus, but it makes more sense to track them than a freestyle or racing drone. No. That's just, that's, don't, don't let them divide us like that. Not to throw GPS pilots under the bus, but I'm kind of going to shove them over near the wheels just a little bit. No. No. It doesn't make sense to track any of these things. 
Okay. Alrighty. Well, that was fun. But that's that's all we're going to do about that. We're going to go back to the Q&A. I guess I just wanted to rant a little bit about that today. And now I have. <laughs>